Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This uh, is a continuation of the discussion that we started on the uh, series on events regarding the martyrdom of Sayyid Fatima Zara Salatullah. Doing this in Shaban because it's a holy month uh, for the Ahl al Salam and Hazrat Fatima Zara Salatullah is the mother of all the Imams. So it just makes sense to discuss this topic right now, especially in the time where. There has been a lot of discussion. It hasn't been happening recently, but there has been a lot of discussion on the to- on this topic. Uh, in the last uh, discussion, we talked about uh, some historical perspectives, where, uh, where uh, especially from a Sunni perspective, Sunni Muslims' perspective, uh, and the key highlights in that discussion uh, was around that first uh, majority of Sunnis don't think that this event ever happened and all the associated hadiths are weak uh, from one perspective of or another and what i've done is i've collected uh, i've been collecting the videos in english farsi arabi urdu where these where shia clerics have linked to sunni books where these hadiths have been mentioned and the sanad and the authenticity of those hadiths uh, have been discussed and have been posting them on a uh, on an individual page however the key theme was no matter what you can do from a historical perspective uh, on the sanad on the being the nature of the authenticity of the hadiths uh, the other party will never agree that's one perspective that I've gained in multiple discussions. And I've got I've highlighted the discussion and the multitude of discussions that I've had on Twitter and YouTube with the Sunnis and their arguments in the last audio, uh, last podcast that you can review. At the same time, many Shias uh, think that this atrocity of public nature uh, shouldn't be discussed even though this was the first atrocity on the household of the prophet and if this had been prevented it would have prevented so many other future atrocities that have happened throughout ages uh, but even then uh, many think that this should not be discussed publicly and as part of this this podcast and the next podcast uh, and probably one more. What I will talk about is uh, what are the reasons why Shias think that this shouldn't be discussed publicly. Uh, and just to be clear, Shias have discussed this. Have this if these events have been shared through generations, uh, through majalis. The death of Sayyidah Fatima Zara Salvatullah has been narrated through Majalis and through different events for over 1400 years, but normally in a private setting. And uh, this time coming into public setting is kind of uncomfortable for many, uh, which we're going to talk about. And the context of why uh, this is being discussed right now. It's very relevant to th- talk about before I go into the key points uh, among the Shias. So last December, uh, there was a trailer that came out for a movie, Lady of Heaven. Um, it was in January, there was a lot of discussion on this movie by both Sunnis and Shias. And as part of that discussion, a lot of insights came out and what happened was over a period of period of like a month month and a half while i was discussing this on twitter and youtube with sunni brothers i was also discussing this with shia brothers on whatsapp and other channels and there was a lot of discussion honestly if i uh, i just compiled the discussion in one document it was more than 50 word document pages that summarizes that discussion and the points and the counterpoints and i would like to highlight those points in this discussion the key aspect is there are a few 
there are five key components which I want to clarify and classify right at the beginning which lay the foundation of the discussion and the outcome of the points that were discussed. First, there is hardly anyone amongst the Shias who argues or doubts that this event happened. So this is either people do not know about it because they live in a country where these things are not mentioned because of uh, the fear of life. And if that is the case, they don't know about it. But those who know, they believe that this happened. People don't doubt this. Second, there is a dis disagreement whether this event should be discussed in public or not. And uh, the third point is linked to this disagreement is pretty apparent through my uh, discussions on WhatsApp and other channels uh, that I will be highlighting uh, in, in this podcast. And there are 20, roughly 22 to 24 key points that uh, have been mentioned for to support that this event should not be discussed in the form of a movie uh, and we should not be watching the movie. Number four is overall there is an agreement between the ulema, between the scholars and the people who follow the scholars that the prominent personalities of Islam, Sunni personalities that our Sunni brothers revere, including the caliphs, should not be cursed. And Umuhat al uh, the Sahaba should be respected. However, fifth point is respecting caliphs does not mean to obscure history. We should state the facts that happened, but we should not be cursing those publicly. Uh, last point is we cannot equate a Sunni brother to an ISIS or Al-Qaeda or Taliban. Um, the Wahhabi mentality is the source of ISIS, Taliban and uh, Al-Qaeda, but we should not equate a Sunni to an extremist faction. So that being said, let's come to the 20 some points that I've gathered, 21 points that I've gathered as part of this uh, discussion that uh, happened in January, February time frame. Uh, and the way that I'm going to structure this is in this first uh, podcast, I'm going to talk about the points that are for or in favor of not sharing or watching this video or movie when it comes out. To date, it's March 2021. It hasn't come out yet. The second podcast as part of this uh, intro will be focused on the counter arguments why this video or movie should be allowed and why one should watch it. And the third will be kind of a very gracious summary by our Dr. Hatim, which clarifies the argument in very, um, very clean and articulate manner and that anyone who follows, if he follows or she follows those few points, they will be able to judge whether they should be watching the video or movie or not. So starting with these 21 points, the first point uh, that was mentioned in favor of not watching the video and the movie and not supporting the movie was that the production house for the TV is linked to Yasser Habib and that uh, that production house for the TV has been prohibited uh, or it has been prohibited by several maraja not I would quote not uh, Ayatollah Sisani or Khamenei, but several other maraja have uh, said that we should not, one should not support for the TV, and that Yasser Habib has been very vocal about this movie. He has a key part in this movie, 
but his background shows that he is one who has who has cursed sahaba ummat al-mu'minin and could have nefarious intentions uh probably because he's based out of britain second the it's possible that the budget of this movie some say 15 million some say more has been sponsored by a foreign entity or an intelligence agency third is there are many maraja who have prevented from watching the movie and we should follow those who know more uh, this goes into the argument that the maraja are the experts on the religious affairs so we should be following those who know more uh, however again to reiterate everyone has uh, the right to follow their maraja and the highest authority uh, in Shia Islam Sayyid Sistani has not prohibited this movie so one can call themselves a maraja but it doesn't mean that they are the maraja of the majority of the people uh, so uh, but in any case that's the third point that many uh, maraja have scholars have uh, stopped forbidden people from watching this movie and uh, number four is Islamic Pulse which is uh, one uh, channel uh, it has uh, claim it has gone against the movie and has been calling out British Shiism like Yasser Habib and Namar Naqshwani very openly and that they should not be followed. Number five, that the point is linked to the Muslim unity and uh, this movie will cause fitna and fitna is worse. Uh, and Imam Ali al-Islam in his final wasiyat has ordered us to be united and the unity will be destroyed by this movie so it should not be watched uh, or and uh, a linked point is watching this movie is equal to supporting this movie which is equal to destroying unity among Muslims sixth point is this was this actual movie will result in increased killing of Shias uh, because many in Sunni world uh, don't know about this event and what are the details and when it becomes public it will cause or incite uh, friction between Shias and Sunnis and would result in a dangerous wave of events. Uh, some even call uh, the events in Iraq and over the past three months as a result of this movie trailer being released number seven that we should uh, and this is something that I've already talked about uh, that we all agree on but number seven is that we should not equate Sunnis uh, to any extremist organization like ISIS and we should not be cursing Sahaba uh, including the caliphs now one thing that i want to be very clear on no one has seen this movie no one knows the contents of the movie i don't know if there is an equal equal uh some there is a similarity being sketched between sunnis and isis i don't know if there is cursing of sahaba in the movie um, if there are historical facts as i mentioned it's different uh, we should not hide the historical facts, but we should, but we don't know what is included in this movie as of now. But that's the point that there shouldn't be any cursing. Now, number nine is basically uh, people who are living safely in the West. Uh, they have the luxury to make arguments and say things about others without being worried about their lives uh, while others uh, other Shia brothers they could face the criticism they could face uh, sectarianism uh, their life might be in danger because of this movie and because if that is a case then we should avoid uh, any such activity and then there is no point in arguing with Sunnah or broader Muslims 
meaning no point meaning there is it's pointless to argue with uh, sunni brothers or broader muslims because many people will ignore the logic so why waste our time on this and create uh, insight sectarianism number 10 so Al Sunnah believe in Adalatul Sahaba, which means that Sahaba have already always been right and this is the foundation or cornerstone of their religion. So anything that says otherwise will convince them that there is a effort of causing fitna, uh, which will not be taken lightly and cause strife. Number 11, those scholars who are having, uh, who are helping flame uh, the sectarianism are f among our community are from the army of Yazid and we should protect the weak ones and cannot let doubt take them astray. So we should not watch this movie because it will cause doubt and again uh, endanger others. Number 12, Sunnah use clips from a certain group of Shias who uh, are who raise questions or are cursing the Sahaba to incite uh, the, the Sunni populace against the Shias and they will do the same with this video. In fact, there was another video uh, which was shared as a response to this not response, but to corroborate this particular item, uh, which was basically number 20, uh, which was the following number for my point, uh, which says that Sunnis are taking this movie uh, and trailer and showing that Shias uh, are creating fitna. And what happens, then this was a counter argument, what happens if a Sunni teacher shows this to a Shia or, or to their student and say, Shias are doing this to your Sahaba and then what if they go and uh, cause bloodshed, whose responsibility will it be? And then it goes into uh, number 13. Everyone knew about the event historically, uh, about the burning of the house, but no one talked about it because of the respect. Uh, and it's similar to everyone knows about uh, the homosexuality and it's uh, the, the, the God's wrath that came on the nation of Luth but we do not talk about it. So it's the same that we should not be talking about this event, even though everyone knows about it. Number 14, there are many clear narrations from the Imams about preventing open tabarra or uh, sharing information that uh, was prohibited by the Imams from the secrets of the Imam. Uh, and uh, number 15, Imams themselves never cursed Umar and Abu Bakr uh, openly in public or for that matter any other caliph. Number 15, this uh, number 16, this movie will just add fuel to the fire and if you go back 40 plus years, there wasn't any Shia killing. It started when media and other people started provoking and this will be another fuel to the fire uh, this will act as a fuel to the fire number 16 by watching this movie no one will ask any questions uh, let alone sunnis will become shias so there is no point and it goes back to number uh, 10 uh, that there is no point in arguing with sunni and the Muslim, broader Muslims, because many people uh, will ignore the logic. Number 17, the enemy wants to divide uh, us and create fitna. This goes back to the concept of unity, that we should not watch and support this movie because it will cause fitna. Number 18, 
we have been commemorating the life and death of Sayyida Fatma Zahra without the movie. So why do we really need the movie to accentuate the effort? And then number 19, is this movie going to talk about injustice uh, in the world that we are seeing today, like Yemen, uh, Palestine, or will it just be causing fitna and just raising issues that are not relevant today? And then number 20 is anything that is halal, if that causes haram, then it becomes haram. So if we don't care we should watch the movie if we don't care about uh, fitna, which is mentioned in Quran, about unity, which is mentioned by Imam Ali al Islam, uh, avoid tabarra, uh, which was done by uh, tabarra, meaning cursing of the prominent Sunni leaders or uh, their khulafa, sahaba, uh, which was respected by the Imams that goes against the Imam's teachings and m many marajah. Uh, we should not uh, do that uh, because, because it results in, uh, it, it, it results in us not supporting the Quran, Imam uh, and the marajah. And number 21, we should follow the marajah even if our maraja, even if our marja is not uh, the one who's giving uh, the the direction to us, because all the maraja are more educated and learned than us, so we should be following them, uh, any of them. So these were all the twenty some reasons which were discussed as part of the uh, discussions that I had uh, on this topic. In the next part, I will address counterpoints to this and will conclude in the following part on a framework that anyone can use to understand what is happening or to make a judgment for themselves because ultimately, everyone is responsible for their own actions. Um, everything that is mentioned over here, uh, it's logical. However, there are equally logical counterpoints to every single point that is mentioned over here. And from a personal perspective, I think the counterpoints are more, uh, they have equal, if not better weight. So thank you very much. I'll talk to you uh, in a few days. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa